welcome to another fantastic episode of DXB Today. And we've got a great one today that I think all of you watching can benefit from. How to be a better speaker, how to get on stage and not be so nervous, how to better communicate with people. We've got some fantastic tips for you. But before we delve into the hows, let's find out what else is coming up on today's episode. Ahmed headed down to the 22nd Arab Media Forum bringing together over 4,000 participants and prominent media figures, helping to shift the digital landscape. And the iconic band uh, Social Pact is joining us in studio. Right, guys, we have a packed show this evening. And it's so ironic that the topic that we're discussing is public speaking, which, you know, three of us, especially the two of you, probably done more public speaking than I personally have. I've been doing television many years, but I believe you two have I mean, done Ash, so you're many... on screen right now. Yeah, so I'm talking about like doing events, like speaking to the public, like I speak to a camera. So definitely, I want to hear from the two of you, whoever wants to take this one. We've done an event together. Yes, we Do have. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was so much fun. I mean, working with you, it doesn't feel like work. I mean, it's so easy, but also we have you, we have our friendship and our work chemistry and everything. So it becomes easier yeah. to host a show together. But Dina, I mean, you do so many shows and what would you say is your take on public speaking? You know, I've had so many conversations with our experts today that I can't wait to delve into. But I'll say that when I when I was young, I was so scared of talking to anybody. I had no friends. I was a bookworm um, and I really forced myself to go out and be more outgoing and to speak to people and then to slowly face my fears. But if I'm going to be completely honest, I still get nervous when I get on stage. But I remember we took a presenting course back in the day, like 15 Gosh. years <laughs> together. And the coach then said, Dina, use that because that's your adrenaline, right? You don't have to be scared of that fear. You don't have to fear the fear itself. Let that drive you. Those nerves, that's an excitement. That's going to be your adrenaline rush when you get on stage. So I try to embrace it now instead of fearing the fear, if that makes sense. Do you ever get nervous, Lane? Um, yeah, you have to create another character, right? You have to, the, to go into that, that stage, that platform as a different person. Still yourself, but then have elements of... Uh, so my, my background's theatre and, and acting and that sort of stuff. So, so I go into that direction. But journalism is something completely separate and different. So I've had to learn different ways and techniques of, of I think we all learn our craft pretty much on the field, correct? I mean, you guys, I mean, we've been doing this for so many years. So I was just reading up on this fear of public speaking is fairly common. It's one of the you know biggest fears Number most one, yeah. people have. And it's actually the technical term for it is glossophobia. And it is a common issue that many people face. But we have several experts coming on the show who are professional public speakers and they're here to give us their insights. So let's find out who our guest co-host today is. Sana Sam with you, Chief Inspiration Officer at MENA Speakers. Can't wait to get the conversation started about public speaking and high impact communication. Oh yes, the Super Sana will join us in the sofa right here in just a bit. But first, our very own Ahmed headed down to the wonderful event and caught up with some inspiring personalities and prominent figures in the region at the Arab Media Forum the largest media thought leadership event in the Middle East. And he went to go and find out how they're helping to drive positive transformations across different sectors. Have a look. I am attending the second edition of the Arab Young Media Forum. And this year's edition, they want to equip the next generation of media professionals with the knowledge and the skills needed for them to succeed and flourish in this world. Firstly, I would like to thank you to jo for joining us on DXP today. I wanted to ask about the second edition of the Arab Youth Media Forum. What why do we need a platform like this, especially in this day and age, for the youth? Thank you for uh, the interview. I think it's a, a great opportunity, a great platform for all the youngsters, all the uh, uh, media uh, creators to, to be here, to present, to start a dialogue with everybody who's uh, into this field. And um, I think we, they can learn a lot. They can uh, uh, start to see uh, the future, where we're going, where we're heading, uh, the challenges and the enablers as well. We have a lot of uh, capabilities now. We're talking about AI, we're talking about the new media age. So I think it's a great platform for all of them to, to learn a lot about it. And I also wanted to ask you about 
Well, how important is it to have a, an event like this, especially for the youth right now? Yeah, I think it's it's brilliant. I mean, obviously, what we do, you know, guys do on Dubai One TV and what we do on radio, media is so important. And I really believe that, especially the Middle East, it's changed. It's evolved over the last 10 years. I've been here for 16 years where I felt like media had just started. And I love the progression that we're, where we're doing right here in the Middle East. My session here focused on how can I inspire uh, the youth? How can I inspire um, a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs who I would like them to get into the media field. Uh, it is a field that uh, uh, has a hunger to start seeing uh, more Emiratis, to start seeing more Arabs uh, getting into this field. Uh, we see the need, it's growing day after day, uh, especially with all the technological advancements that we are witnessing nowadays. I believe uh, opportunities are endless. And, and I was here to basically convey some of the challenges I went through personally and how uh, I, I basically overcome the challenges and how they can step into this industry today. And, and the potential is, uh, is amazing. And one more thing, why do you think it's important for us to have a forum like this, especially for the youth in this day and age? Um, see, uh, youth are the future generation and um, they are the one who are maybe much more advanced than us in accepting the new technology and AI, especially in applying it in, in media. Uh, a great example is the broadcasters. They are everywhere and it's very successful. And it started with youth. So we have to admit it and we have actually to equip them because they are very creative and very talented, and we should enrich that through this uh, forum. Why do you think it's important to have a forum like this right now for the youth? Um, it really gives us a lot of support and uh, motivation uh, to have um, a huge entity like this support us and hear our needs. Uh, I've been attending those since I started back in 2016 and it's always made me feel very, very supported. As you can see, it is important to have an event like this, especially for the next generation of media experts, because it will help them shape the future of media. Now our co-host today is the founder of a premier speakers bureau in the Middle East, revolutionizing the industry on a global scale through her expertise, helping link top tier speakers with high profile events across the region. Please welcome to DXB today, Sana Azam. <laughs> How is it going? Thank you for having me. Things are going great. Great. We are so excited to have you. And the, the biggest reason I'm excited to have you is you go on stage yourself you hire people to go on stage, you link those, the companies with the right speakers, but then you also train people who are eager to pursue it as a career. How do those three work together? And what, what have you learned the most kind of playing those, mm. taking on those three roles? So the beautiful thing that I've learned is that public speaking communication is a skill. It's something that you can learn, just like driving a car or learning a sport. It's something that you can acquire. So you don't have to necessarily be naturally great at it and I think that's a big misconception it's something that you can improve and enhance on and you can deconstruct it and kind of build up these different strategies to become even better what would you say are some of the tactics to improve I mean I tried to watch myself on screen and the last couple of episodes I realized I kept fiddling with my ring a lot I don't know if that's some sort of <laughs> I don't know if that just gives you more confidence yeah. like I was yeah. like why am I playing yeah. with my ring so much I should either wear less accessories or maybe it's just a habit I've picked up yeah. so I think watching yourself um, helps a lot but also I feel like sometimes I judge myself a lot more harshly than somebody mm -hmm. else might so what would you say um, you know we can do to improve and I love that. I think that's a really fair and good assessment on your own. So oftentimes when we're doing stuff like this, we're trying to self-soothe, we're yeah. regulating, we're trying to bring down our own heart rate so that we feel more calm. So it is a stress reaction. And then the awareness of that, all you need to do is take a deep breath, long exhale out to kind of bring down your own heart rate on your own. That could be a tactic that you can use prior to speaking. Um, it's as simple as, as doing something like that to become more calm. And what you can do as well is maybe Get help from an expert. Sometimes we can be so critical of ourselves 
and maybe assess something as worse than what it is. Often I get people who say, you know, my accent is not good, or I don't speak fluent English, or I use a lot of ums and ahs. And I go, you know what? That's fine. That's what makes you human. So keep that, but let's enhance other things so that you become a more high impact speaker by changing structures or body language or other things that I can spot as an expert in the field. So Sunny, you mentioned some body language there as well. And the, the, the research behind that is really interesting. And mm -hmm. I've been looking into that a little bit myself as well. Um, I've gone down the rabbit hole looking at different people uh, <laughs> in Hollywood recently yeah. and knowing when someone's lying or not, you know what I mean? Ooh. So this whole mm -hmm. body language thing Ooh. is quite a big thing. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Mm. So there are a lot of uh, clues of when people are being insincere and the good news is that we are innately wired to detect uh, if somebody's being insincere or not. And then the other side of it is that we really feel comfortable and at ease when somebody's being fully authentic. Um, and when it comes to body language, the research shows that <clears throat> if you use more hands, hand gestures when you're speaking, somebody like Simon Sinek is a prime example. So the speakers that were on TED, when they used more hand gestures, were deemed as more popular when they were being analyzed, when the audio was on or off, if that makes sense. So the same speaker was being analyzed on a similar topic, and whether somebody's speaking and it sounds like this, or if they're very happy, they were deemed as more popular and likable. So um, the invitation here is feel free to use hand gestures. Yeah. And here in the Middle East, we love hand gestures. Oh, so I, am, I am 100% <laughs> this person. Me too, me too. I'm all of that, all of that. <laughs> now, we were talking about nerves, um, Ash and I and Lane, just before you came on. What's your best advice for tackling nerves? Because, you know, public speaking continues to be the biggest fear internationally. Mm -hmm. So to tackle nerves, proper preparation prevents poor performance. <laughs> so if anything, all those fees just do that. Uh, prepare yourself, that's really key. It will reduce nerves. There's research that says up to 75% from Fred Pryor organization. So that's one, but really you should be, kind of what you were saying, you should feel a bit of nerve. This is not a Netflix, I'm at home taking an easy moment. This is a peak performance moment where you're there to engage a lot of people in the room and you're essentially the leader of the room. And so you should be on high alert. So your nerves are serving you and that's a good thing. I shouldn't be like this. I should rather be like this and just understand what's happening around me. And if there's something that makes me need to mobilize a hundred people, then I as a leader should be able to snatch that up. But even if you are prepared, there are moments you get on stage. I mean, I feel like I'll memorize an entire script, but I still have that da -da 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 when I'm getting back up on stage. I'm like, there's a thousand people in the audience. Yes. Don't trip, Dina, don't trip. <laughs> this is gonna be your Jennifer Lawrence moment. I don't know if this happens with you, but usually when I'm on TV or if I'm at a public event, if I make one little mistake or if I mispronounce mm. one little word, the other person or the audience over there probably didn't even pick up on it, but in my head, there's an explosion, right? I said, <laughs> this is it, I've messed up, my career is over, yeah. nobody's going to hire me. In my head, yeah. it is so amplified. But when I watch myself back on TV, and I, like, I probably I wouldn't even notice it, I just, no. exactly. But then yeah. in that moment, you feel like it's the end of the world. Mm. Do you feel that? No, yeah. I see that with you. I, I, I definitely have it as well, but I yeah. see that with you as well. You're just like, oh. You get angry with yourself and like, no, you should love yourself. Yeah. That. What do you do? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's something that's called a cognitive rehearsal when yeah. you're just kind of looping what's happening and it's a it's a trait of overachievers and high achievers, so it's quite common. No one's called me an overachiever, but I'll <laughs> you. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, just self soothe, go into self soothing um, and coach yourself out of it. Ask for feedback so that somebody can calm you down. And be like, it's not the end of the world. It's fine. We're humans, and that's a good thing, and that's the beauty of us. We make mistakes, but the show must go on. So going back to what is the best technique to really regulate your nerves, let's validate. Nerves are good. We want to be in a peak performance state, so we keep that. Thank you, body, for that. But if you really want to go into a place of calming down, do an in inhale, hold your breath, and a long exhale. What happens when you inhale, you know, your heart is beating. And with an inhale, you're expanding, so the heart has more space to breathe. But with an exhale, it's almost like the body's hugging the heart and it's calming it down. So focus on the long exhale to feel a bit more relaxed.
All right, Zen, it's time for our viewers to take a long exhale. So how about you stick with us? There's so much we want to talk to you about because it's time for a quick break. Coming up, we overcome presentation, anxiety, and master the state of flow with the founder of Speak Fluence. So don't go anywhere.